Hi guys, so today I'm coming to you with a breakdown of the Gladiator Star Destroyer for Star Wars Armada. We're going to look at the two types of Gladiators, uh, the Gladiator 1 and the Gladiator 2, and we're going to kind of compare them a little bit. We're going to talk about the different titles that come with the Gladiator, we're going to talk about the different roles that it can play, um, where it fits into the game today, and we're also going to talk about which commanders work best with the Gladiator. So first off, there's two types of Gladiators. You've got a Gladiator 1 and a Gladiator 2. Uh, Gladiator 1 is the cheaper, and in my personal opinion, the better ship. And the Gladiator 2 is the more expensive, and the one you're probably going to use less often. But there are some situations in which you'd want to use it for. The Gladiator 2's main difference is that it has an extra blue anti-squadron die, which is actually pretty good. Uh, and it also has an extra red die in place of a black die on the sides. Um, they're virtually the same everywhere else. Uh, it has five hulls, so for a small ship, it, it's a big model, but it is still classified as a small ship. Uh, it's actually pretty pretty tanky for a small ship because it has brace and it has a redirect uh, and an evade. So it's got one of each, but having one of each makes it kind of susceptible to accuracies because it can't really double up on anything. Uh, but it's a it's probably the tankiest small ship in the game. Uh, I think it was probably hovering on the you know the line between what a small and a medium ship could be. Some have argued it should have been a medium ship, but I think it was a small ship for gameplay balances. Now that being said, uh, it is a, a pretty nice ship. You'll probably only ever need to get one, but there are some uses if you want more than one. We're going to talk about those when we get to the titles. Uh, but this is a black dice heavy ship. It has a little bit of red in the front, um, and then with the Gladiator 2, a little bit of red on the sides. But it's, it's, really, it's really a black dice heavy ship, and it's primarily used as a ship to get into close range and roll lots of black dice damage. So, the titles. The, the, uh, the Gladiator comes with two different titles. Um, we're going to talk about the lesser used title first, the Insidious. And the Insidious is actually a pretty cheap title. It costs three, and basically allows your black dice to be used at up to medium range when attacking the rear of an enemy ship. Now this is kind of cool, but the problem is it's usually pretty hard to get close shots on the rear of an enemy ship, because by that point it's usually later in the game, and you're not that tanky of a ship, so you very good chance you may be dead before you get to actually pull off that shot. So if you plan on running this ship, you're probably going to need to be first player. But if you do want to run the Insidious, uh, you'll probably want maybe something like expanded launchers or something to increase your number of black dice you want to because that's what you're really going for you're going for black dice um it also is going to be a good idea to run ordnance experts because ordnance experts are like almost a must-have on this ship because it's all black dice it's it, the, the name of the ship is basically the black dice um the black dice catastrophe so you want your ordnance experts out there um, engine text is also a possibility for for insidious you're going to want extra maneuverability to try to get into uh, into close range, uh, or in, I should say, get into medium range, but being able to target the rear of their ship. I mean, close range works too, but then you're kind of more susceptible. So the sweet spot for this guy is a little bit behind the enemy ships and outside of their black dice range. Also, at medium range, you'll be able to use your evade to force them to reroll something. So that's good as well. So that's the insidious. The next title is the big one, the demolisher. Now, the demolisher is probably the greatest title in the game. And it makes the Gladiator into one of the greatest ships in the game. And it's so amazing that usually people only fly this one and don't fly any other type of Gladiator. So the Demolisher it allows you to move and then attack. It's pretty insane uh, because it's the only ship in the game that can do this. So that's you know game breaking in, in, in a, from a certain point of view, but it's also really nasty because you can combo that with engine techs. So engine text is actually allowing you to perform a maneuver so that you can potentially move your three. You know, oh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not close enough. I'll do, I'll move one more if you have done a nav command. And with demolisher, you pretty much will always want to be doing nav commands for, you know, for one to trigger engine text and for two to just get the extra yaw because you want to, you know, maximize your maneuverability so you can make sure you have just the right arc because if you want to roll all your black dice and you move and you only have the front arc on something, you may want to be able to turn so that you can have side arc on them instead. Um, now it is also important to know that you still can't attack out of the same side. So if you, like, ideally with a demolisher, you're set up close to one ship, you activate, you attack one ship at close range, and then you move and attack another ship at close range. Which means, which means you may want to possibly select gunnery teams for, for the demolisher, but 
I, only gunnery teams if you have a commander that's allowing you to mitigate your dice. Usually you want to run ordnance experts. Um, another, some other good things you may want to put on a demolisher are assault proton torpedoes or assault concussion missiles. Either one, they're, they're kind of, you know, whichever your preference is. I usually go with assault proton torpedoes because of the cost and, um, and it can potentially do more, although I think assault concussion missile does typically does more actual damage. But uh, assault proton torpedoes can be really, really nasty, especially if it takes down their shields. Uh, and also, uh, Intel Officer is a really nice uh, option to make up for the one, one of the biggest weaknesses that the Gladiator has is that it has a really hard time getting accuracies. So, for example, if you ever wanted to take out a flotilla, you would almost never be able to do that because you could all, virtually never stop the, you know, their, um, their scatter. So unless you happen to get a front shot and one of your two red dice ended up being accuracy, you know, you're, you're probably not going to do it. So an intel officer allows you to skirt around things like that and so say, fine, if you want to scatter, then it's gone and then I'll get you next turn. And, um, and it's great to be able to force them to lose their scatter that way. So intel officer is just, um, it's really nice. Uh, on a demolisher. Although with all these upgrades you're increasing the cost because it is kind of a cheaper ship um, but once you've put demolisher on there and then all the other upgrades you you you, you really make it an expensive ship but it's a very very powerful piece of a list and a lot of times people are going to prioritize attacking the demolisher. So uh, I think I think engine text is kind of a must-have doing nav commands every turn I think ordnance experts is definitely a must-have. Um, something to trigger a black crit because you black dice are have a great chance of getting crits, so something for a black crit also. Now, roles. I think the primary role of any gladiator is going to be an assassin, uh, and, and and this is why I think you really need only one. For the, the biggest the biggest reason to use it is to run a demolisher and have him basically fly in and you know do the double tap and be able to move and and, and finish somebody off when they thought they were safe. Um, it's it sneaks up on you and is it's very especially at speed three it's very difficult to outrun it um, considering that it can shoot after it moves uh, but none of the other gladiators can do that so even if you own four gladiators only one of them is going to be able to equip the demolisher title the rest are not nearly as good I mean the title demolisher makes it so amazing as an assassin and nobody else can really compare to that so that's why I say you really only need one but if you do want to get a couple more, maybe you find them on sale, maybe you're gifted one, or maybe you just really like the ship, there are a couple other things you can do. So another role might be as a flanker. And, and, and I only say this as a moderate role, it's not a, really its strength, it's, its main strength is as an assassin. But you can potentially run it as a flanker um, if you have a couple of them. I've, I've actually run a couple of gladiators with an interdictor before, um, and, it, and it works well if you equip the targeting scrambler on an interdictor. Now that allows some protection for your ships that are inevitably going to have to get into close range. So you can potentially have, you know, two gladiators on the side and an interdictor in, in the middle and you kind of surround an enemy. And if even if, you know, they're going to be able, you know, they're going to be able to shoot you but the uh, at, at close range because you're going to be at close range, but targeting scrambler will help keep your interdictors alive long enough to shoot that way. So that's that's one way you can potentially do it. And if you're doing stuff like that, maybe expanded launchers for the for the coming forward type of attack, um, or or different different things like that. Anything that's going to increase your firepower uh, or potentially increase your survivability. Although there's not a whole lot we can do right now with with survivability for these guys. I think the biggest thing you can do is um, an interdictor with targeting scrambler. So and probably if you're going to do that, you want the interdictor title on there as well, so you can use targeting scrambler multiple times. Um, it's not really good. To, of a place to put your your uh, your commander. It's not a very good flagship because it can be focused down very easy. It's very susceptible to accuracy, and it's not really good as as a carrier. Um, although it can be a good supplemental ship for a fleet uh, for a squadron based build because it has a, you know the value of two is all right. Um, and if you needed to do a squadron command with it, you could. But the reason it's not really good as a carrier is because you pretty much want to be doing nav commands with this. Now the. Uh, it's great that you don't have to be doing concentrate fire commands because it's a, a damage dealing ship, but it's got so many dice. And if you have, you know, if you have your um, ordnance experts on there, you don't even really need to worry about it. You're going to get you know, six to eight damage on this thing every time it attacks. So it's going to be fantastic. But you pretty much want to be doing nav commands. You don't want to have to do squadron commands with this thing. So that's why I don't think it's very good as a squadron based ship. Now, I want to talk about commanders. 
who can we put this thing with, or actually I'll start in the opposite order, who shouldn't we put this thing with? And at the bottom of my list, the one, the, the one, the least likely one to use in this case is going to be Constantine. Now, Constantine is, I mean, he, he has a use for it, but it's more of, he's, he's useful for other ships because Constantine needs uh, medium or large ships to trigger, and this is a small ship. So that's why he's at the bottom of the list. Um, granted, this can fit into a Constantine build, uh, but not for a gladiator. Like, if you were going to run a whole bunch of gladiators and other small ships, Constantine would be completely worthless. He wouldn't be able to be used at all. So if you have a couple of other large ships and you're thinking of using Constantine, this can work, but it's risky. I personally like to use all medium or large ships if I'm going to use Constantine to better my chances of actually triggering him. And so by having small ships in that list, you're taking a gamble that it's not going to work. So while it can work, you're kind of kind of making the odds work less in your favor by you bringing a small ship into a Constantine build. Next is Ozzel. Um, Ozzel does work on these guys because of their speed. However, a lot of times you want to really be staying at speed 3. You don't want to change speed that much. There is a use for him, and he's also cheap, so that's good. But I've never seen anybody really field these guys with Ozzel, and I can't imagine wanting to really adjust speed that much. Although there is a use case where if you get to slow somebody down, if you have a build with tractor beams, you catch up with them at speed 3 and then slow down. The reason I think that Ozzel isn't that great here, though, is because, like I said before, with a, with a gladiator, you really want to be running nav commands all the time. And so you'll probably have a token and a nav command anyway, and so you can already slow down very easily because you should always have a nav command kind of queued up. At least that's my opinion. You know, if, if you find something else works for you, by all means, but... I don't think uh, I don't think Ozzel's very good here. Next is Jerjerod. Now I've said before that Jerjerod is my favorite, or at least one of my favorite Imperial commanders, and he absolutely is. And the only reason he ranks so low in this list is because he's. This is probably like the one ship that really doesn't need him because of the nav commands. Um, almost every other Imperial ship can really benefit from Jerjerod. This is one that just doesn't really need him as much. So. While he has some use, it's just not super great on a gladiator. It's good, but it's just a better use elsewhere. And I think you'll get, because you're going to be doing nav commands all the time, you'll get more bang for your buck with a different commander. And that's really all I have to say there. Um, next up, Vader. Now, Vader's great. Um, and he's kind of in the middle here because the main reason is I think your points are better spent somewhere else because you should have, hopefully, ordnance experts on your gladiator. And so if that's the case, you really don't need the re-rolls that Vader's going to give you because you're already going to have Ordnance Experts. It's possible, however, that you want to have double re-rolls. So one re-roll from Ordnance Experts, and then, oh, all right, we still have two blanks, Vader triggers again. But you'd have to have really bad luck to, to, to need to re-roll dice that many times. And it's just, you know, and it's not efficient. It's kind of a waste of points if you're doing it that way. Now, if you really want gunnery teams, then I can understand maybe wanting Vader on there and, and you're not going to put Ordnance Experts. And it kind of depends on how many ships you have that could use Ordnance Experts. If you've got, you know, seven copies of Ordnance Experts on the board, you know, you're running Raiders and Gladiators, and then maybe use Vader and then you can wipe all those Ordnance Experts off and then it'll be more cost efficient. But um, it's generally not that great. Now, one way you can potentially run Vader with these guys if you're looking at actually maximizing their red dice, because they do have two red dice in the front, and then the Gladiator 2 also has one on the side. So if you wanted to run as many ships as possible that could shoot red dice out the front, uh, I mean, you could go with you know, the Gazantes, uh, the more expensive Gazanti that has a red die, but then you'd have to buy like 13 of them, and it's ridiculous. Um, well, not 13, but yeah. Anyway, you, would pro you could probably potentially run a couple of Gladiators and maybe a couple of... Um, Architons, maybe, uh, you know, and, and have everybody do concentrate fire, aiming right towards the enemy for hoping for like a huge alpha strike where each ship is doing concentrate fire and rolling maybe three or four red dice um, on the first round at long range. And that could be a lot of dice for like an opening salvo, especially if opening salvo is one of your objectives. In that case, I could see running Vader because you're putting all your eggs in this one basket and you're hoping that you can bring down like their flagship on the first and gate in the first round of shooting. Um, that's risky and I wouldn't recommend doing that outside of just an experimental game or a game that's just for fun but uh, but I could see potentially doing something like that I don't really recommend it though next is tag now tags a little higher in this than he's been in some other lists because 
for one, they only have one of each of their evade uh, of their defense tokens. So there's, there's a very real chance they're going to use these up. And so it's more likely that, you know, tag will actually come back in. Um, they are susceptible to accuracy, but whatever you use up, tag can can pull back in. And so because you don't have double, you can't double up of anything, more likely you're going to, you know, that redirect is going to go away pretty quickly or, or, or the brace is going to go away pretty quickly. Very possible. And also, like I said, um, especially if you're running the Demolisher, he's, he's going to be targeted almost first by everything. So now you don't have to worry about, oh, well, this bomber just hit me for two damage. Should I brace that down to one? Absolutely you should. Save every hull point you can because Tag's going to refresh and, and bring it back in. So it's actually Tag helps against, like, is more of a squadron defense in this case because accuracies are so common for so many builds. Tag will help you, uh, especially against squadrons, as well as the big ships if they get lucky and don't roll accuracies. Um, next up, Tarkin. Tarkin ranks high in just about every build. He's he's good all around, and he's he's one of those guys that's always useful. His literally his only drawback is that he is crazy expensive. But Tarkin helps you be able to have a nav command every turn. So now you can actually do concentrate fire commands with your demolisher. You'll always have that nav command, f or or if you get some damage. And you need to run, you know, engineer to try to, you know, as you're running away and it's turn five or something like that. And you just want to make sure your ship doesn't get blown up as it flies away. Um, Tarkin's good for all of those things. And if you needed to, and if you find yourself as a demolisher in a build that's primarily a squadron build and demolishers are just playing the assassin role, you can always have Tarkin assign some squadron tokens too, just to, you know, just to surprise your enemy that your demolisher is now actually, you know, activating squadrons or a squadron for the token. So Tarkin is just great all around, and what I love most about him is that he allows you to choose each turn depending on the situation. So you can't go wrong, you can ne really never go wrong with Tarkin. And they have a command of two, so they can have more than one token. The only time I really would rank Tarkin low on ships is when they have a command value of only one, and um, you know their, their token's gonna be almost wasted with Tarkin. Uh, next is Screed. Now Screed ranks pretty high on these guys because he's A, he's cheap, and, and B, he can force the crit, which gladiators are really good for getting black crit stuff, like the uh, ex the proton torpedoes and the concussion missiles. So, a Screed forces that. Now, it's it's only once per attack, but or once per activation, I should say. But it's a, it's a good way to be able to make sure you can get it. It's not as good a dice mitigation as in general as Vader, and it's not as good a dice mitigation even as Ordnance Experts. But if you're really trying to go cheap and fit as many ships as you can with just maybe assault proton torpedoes, Screed is a great way just to guarantee you're going to get a crit. And when you really, really just need to get a crit, Screed is good for that. And this is a ship that it actually can shine with. Uh, so Screed does work with these guys, and he can combo well if you also want blue crits. So if you're running maybe a Star Destroyer Avenger, and you're running some, uh, you know, some other blue blue crit stuff to deactivate all of their uh, defense tokens and and then you have this as your assassin in that build um now granted scree is not specifically for this ship in that con in that context but scree just is a great way to force crits and black dice crits are some of the nastiest crits in the game uh and then last is my number one choice is Mahdi. Uh, Mahdi works well with every build, I've said this before, um, but because the Gladiator is a small ship and they have five hull, which is pretty good for a small ship, so this brings them up to six. Um, now they have a lot, now that's the same hull as an assault frigate, you know, so that it almost makes them into little tanks. And it's amazing how much that one extra point of hull can add to the survivability of a ship that everybody's trying to target down right away. Um, and of course he affects your whole fleet as well, but Mahdi really just is amazing and you need this ship to survive and that's the biggest I think the biggest weakness of it is that for a black dice close range ship a lot of times it's dead before it can get close enough to you um, and in the case of the demolisher maybe you does move and get close enough to you and, and gets that one shot off but you really want to activate it more than just one time because it's a whole lot of points to spend on just a single good shot so Mahdi is really worth it even if it just buys you one extra turn on the demolisher he's paid for himself so that is all of the commanders and that is my look at the gladiator so what do you think of the gladiator um how have you run it have you run the demolisher yet uh, or do you prefer the insidious uh, do you think the gladiator could use 
you know, anything else, maybe some, some new titles in, in, in another kind of expansion pack. We, you know, we've seen them kind of do that with the Corellian campaign and give some new, some new you know, ship configurations out for squadrons, rather. And, uh, you know, it's, it's some have speculated that perhaps they'll add new titles to existing ships. Personally, I would think that would be fabulous. I would love to see some more titles for existing ships, especially Star Destroyers, because we have so many titles for Star Destroyers in the books, in canon. Uh, I'd like to see some more for the Gladiator and give it something else that it could do. Maybe a better squadron support, or maybe more of a tankier ship. Maybe it sacrifices black dice to gain an extra shield and an extra hull, or something like that. Um, you know, I'd love to see some different ways to run a Gladiator, but it'd be nice just to break out of the we've got to have a Demolisher role. Uh, so let me know what you think, guys, and if all, as always, if you haven't, uh, go ahead and subscribe and uh, give a thumbs up and leave a comment, and I really appreciate all of it. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day.